It's a parallel universe. It's March 2023. And version 12 FSD comes out. And the regulators instantly approve RoboTaxi because it's that good. From a production point of view, you can now pump out RoboTaxis in any of your models. What is your strategy moving forward? Do you sell to customers, only to fleets, keep it to yourself? What's your strategy? You're an executive at Tesla. What's the strategy moving forward from that point in time? That's such a interesting question because that's what's likely to happen when it turns on. Let's just assume it's happened today. And uh, the United States government has uh, all the lobbying that Elon has been doing on both sides is working out. <laughs> they got a green light. So what I would do is, okay, I need to, I need to stay within the guidelines of the Tesla mission, which is advancing the advent of sustainable transport. The best way to do that is through uh, as affordable as possible transportation. And so the way I would do it is that I would prioritize the manufacturing of the vehicle that's going to allow me to minimize the cost to the consumer when it comes to transportation. And that's going to be probably some sort of combination of Model Y and Model 3 and this compact car that's coming out, obviously. And so if this were to happen today and I don't have compact car, um, let's say production, let's say we are where we are today, then I'm trying to prioritize that as much as humanly possible and really try to bring it forward as much as possible because that's going to be by far my lowest cost per mile especially when tesla is able to take a 50 percent cut on production on the production side which means that the price of the end consumer if they decide to pass it on will be somewhere around 50 percent um what what's probably going to happen under that scenario is that as long as i am cheaper than the average uber ride in in all markets so say i'm paying I, I, so I pay 50 bucks to go down to the airport with a with an Uber driver. If I can get the cost to $40 or $35 and I, I can get a robot taxi to come to me just as fast, if not faster than an Uber, that solution will win 100% of the time. And you don't really have to go that much lower than an Uber. You just have to go a little bit below uh, that Uber. And what that will mean is that the demand is going to go like crazy. It's like, oh, my God, I can go anywhere for much cheaper than using an Uber or even buying a car. <laughs> so you can kind of see how what, what this means. So then it's like, OK, I need to fill the market with these cars. So you have to go and start producing the car that's going to be the easiest one to produce, which will be the compact car. Up until that point, I am cranking out Model 3s and Model Ys. I might even stop building S's and X's, to be completely honest. <laughs> Who knows? Right, the, the the equation changes radically under this scenario. Um, if it were to be like a like a sudden change like that, and we're talking about the United States, obviously different parts of the world will be will, will have different regulations, right? If the entire world is is green lighting self driving cars, then I don't really know what's the purpose of like a you know a uh, like a Model S or a Model X under that scenario. Uh, it, it's like it becomes a little dubious because the market, I think, might demand something something completely different. Uh, that's that's my answer. So, in which case is Tesla going to be keeping all their own robo taxis? Are they going to be selling them just to fleet operators, like let's say a Hertz? Are they still going to be selling them to the public who are perhaps uh, purchasing just for their own ownership? You know, what do you think the mix is going to be there? I think Tesla will sell to fleet owners because I don't think Tesla is going to want to take on the burden of maintaining a fleet that's going to require cleaning, upkeep. It adds, it adds complexity to Tesla's business. Now, I get the whole uh, the, the standpoint of, OK, but but why introduce a third party when you can just you know, you can just have your own robo taxi network, but the upkeep of the robo taxi network implies that Tesla would have to bring on a, a, the party that comes in that is not focused on engineering, that's strictly focused on keeping these things clean and running. I don't think that's in Tesla's DNA. I think Tesla would rather put uh, as much, um, as much, let's say, effort and talent as humanly possible in creating the thing that enables that technology, and then. Uh, outsourcing the running of the fleets. There's also a, a, a different thing as well. I think this is part of how Elon Musk thinks about the economy and the world, is that if Tesla becomes this company that is um, controls self-driving in a sense, right? They control transportation because they'll have the cheapest cost per mile solution, which will mean that they will likely 
have a huge chunk of transportation in a, in a best or worst case scenario, depending which side you're looking at it, 50, 60, 70, 80% of all miles driven. I don't think the regulators are going to like that. And I don't think the public is going to like that. It starts going into this whole mantra of, you know, this thing that people are scared of, you will own nothing and you will be happy kind of thing, right? You have one centralized company that's doing that. I just don't think that's part of Tesla's DNA. So what's most likely to happen, in my opinion, I could be wrong, is that Tesla will outsource the fleet running and your Hertzes and anybody else who comes up uh, that, you know, like you and I could start our fleet business, we'll buy uh, these robo taxis, uh, and in my head, we'll be able to customize the interior. So, you know, David's uh, robo taxi will be um, a great for people that want to go cross country and they want to have an amazing experience where they have big windows and they get to see nature. Mine will be, I don't know, party. We'll have seven fridges and we'll have, you know, 17 kinds of beers in there. You can just have to do karaoke and stuff, right? Like there's, there's all these uh, things start to open up. And uh, that's a lot of complexity. And I just don't think Tesla is going to want to take that on. That's too much. Mm -hmm. So Tesla should just focus on making the robo taxi, outsource it to the fleet runners, very similar to the air, uh, airline model. Airbus and Boeing make the planes. And then you got United, uh, you know, all these different guys, Spirit, uh, Virgin, whoever else. And then they decide how they want to outfit these, uh, these vehicles, these transportation units. Do you think companies like Hertz are just going to hoover up all of that production capacity? Or do you think people like you and I could start to build a fleet of one, two, three, four, five, ten cars, whatever it is? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think it's all highly dependent on the market. I think the market's going to want to demand different use cases for self-driving vehicles. So uh, over time, as this technology becomes more and more uh, pervasive, let's call it, that it's everywhere, a self-driving car, I don't think one company is going to be able to offer the best solution for every use case. So our Hertz uh, maybe will prioritize point A to point B at the cheapest cost per mile. And then, uh, you know, like I like I said, your company could prioritize uh, a amazing experience when it comes to seeing what's around you. Uh, another company could prioritize offering uh, amenities for people that like to work on the go or, uh, you know, like leisure on the go. There's going to be different form factors and sizes as well. I think that's another part of this equation that I think Tesla hasn't unveiled, but kind of unveiled with like the van form factor, but that's a bigger one. So like an RV style thing. And yeah, there could be like a Hertz that's going to hoover up all the different use cases. But what usually happens with that is a company rarely is good at all things. No company is good at all things. And so I think specializing with that within that space is going to um, give birth to a lot of different companies that will specialize on those unique use cases that the market will demand. And the longer we go down this road, the more and more things people will demand. Because you think about what is a what is a self-driving car? In my head, I conceptually speaking, the way I think about it, a self-driving car is a house on wheels. It's just a place you hang out while you go to a place. And a house is kind of like that, but you're not going anywhere. And of course, you have a lot more room and you have a bathroom, you know, and you have your dogs and stuff. But there's no reason why these self-driving cars can't be a, a miniaturized version of that, where folks would demand a similar level of or similar type of things that they would naturally do at home that they cannot do on the road. And then being on the road also open up a bunch, uh, opens up a bunch of different possibilities because on the way to your destination, the roads will start to adapt to what the market is demanding in a self-driving economy. And so you kind of, you know, gets your gears turning. You're like, okay, so what are the opportunities there? Maybe, I don't know, you have drive-through experiences. I have no idea. I have, this is all, we're not even there yet. But I think that's how the economy will develop and small companies will come up that will address those niches. Hmm. So when this landmark moment happens, do you think Tesla will mandate that all their vehicles have to be sold with FSD bought with it, whether that's subscription or upfront cost? I think it, it depends heavily on regulators. I think if regulators demand that all cars have to have this technology because of safety, I think Tesla will have no choice but to give it. Like they have to give it. They might give it anyway. I mean, they kind of do this already with their cars. They're a portion of the safety features that's enabled because of that self-driving technology is turned on uh, by default because of its safety. So the you know automatic avoidance, all this stuff. That's all 
uh, because of their self-driving computer. It's just a small portion of that technology in a sense. That's how I think about it. And so if more and more of that becomes, um, let's say, regulators demand it, similarly to a seatbelt, right? Like the seatbelt was an option that Volvo introduced. And then because it saved so many lives uh, and there was data, you know, there was a movement towards making that happen. And then what ended up happening is a lot of OEMs were fighting to <laughs> were fighting to not do it because it would add costs. And eventually regulators are like, shut up and add this damn thing to your car because it's saving lives. Something like that will happen with full self-driving. So um, I think at some point, I think at some point cars will have to drive themselves. But until regulators force it, I don't think Tesla will turn it on because it's still, you know, I still think it's give the people the option until the people don't want the option anymore and then pass it on and allow regulators to decide when that is. Mm -hmm. And in in a very Tesla and Elon Musk st style, let the product be so compelling that everyone buys it anyway, which is a very Elon Elon sort of style. What sort of teething it. problems do you see, you know, in this starting out phase? Like I sort of imagine like a robo vacuum cleaner stuck in the corner going backwards and forwards, <laughs> backwards and forwards, which obviously is not going to happen. But there's going to be some teething problems. And, you know, are there any which you think or which stick out to you? Oh, yeah, th there's going to be many. I mean, there's going to be the uh, the even even when regulators turn on self-driving and Tesla's able to operate a fleet of, say, by then, hopefully millions of self-driving capable cars, you're going to have a one you're going to have like five to 50 situations every year with with a, with a tail, you know? that are just so strange and so weird that it's going to make headlines and people are going to be like, oh, and look at this thing. That would have never happened if I was, I was in the car. Like, I don't know, suddenly a freaking, you're in the middle of Montana and there's a pack of wolves come out and they surround your car and the car is, doesn't know what to do. So it just stays there. And then people are going to be like, I am so afraid I was surrounded by wolves. I would have just driven right through them. Right. So it's going to be that kind of thing. It's going to be inevitable. <laughs> the more cars you have. But it's just going to be part of progress, part of, um, you know, part of how this is how technology sort of catches on, even just with electric vehicles for the first, you know, X number of years that Tesla was shipping the Model S and the Model X. What was the dominating thing on the headlines for the news? Oh, my God, electric vehicle caught fire. It caught fire, y'all. It's so unsafe. What ended up happening? It drove over a freaking huge thing in the in the on the road that would have impaled the driver in a gas car. But because there's a battery on the floor, it prevented them from dying. <laughs> and instead, the car caught fire and the passenger was safe instead of dying. So there, there's no full context, right? So similar thing will happen with the self-driving cars. Um, and there, there will be many. But I think ultimately, as long as the value proposition uh, mirrors that of, say, like a plane where people know it's the safest form of transportation and they are willing to pay X number of dollars to travel X number of miles at X speed then it will it will catch on and those little things that come up over time are going to be irrelevant more and more irrelevant and it will just be uh fodder for media to drive clicks and make a, a few extra bucks with ad revenue and and everybody wins <laughs> that's really what's going to end up happening i think if you're yeah. correct about that montana and pack of wolves uh, scenario we'll, we'll have to clip this cut this uh this this bit here. yes <laughs> you heard it here first. Um, <laughs> yep. And I think one other piece of technology, which would be awesome to see again, which we haven't seen in a long time, is Tesla's charging snake. Um, I'm sure that will be rolled out if if robot taxis take it by storm like we hope they will. Or or they'll just deploy bots and the bots will just plug the cars in. Yep. Good yeah. point. Because you only need Speaking one bot bots, per supercharger. You don't need a bunch of snake chargers, right? You just need one bot. So like... The cost of one bot versus the cost of a bunch of snake chargers, I bet you the bot's way cheaper. <laughs>